Hi everyone. I'm going to continue my series on the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And I really hope and trust that uh, you have been getting something from this. Um, I'm doing it quite a bit for myself as well as for you. Um, I think it's for me it's a good exercise. So at one level I'm not really concerned about how many people watch it or don't watch it. Um, a number of years ago the Lord said to me it, to let him take care of of how much things get distributed, how how widespread uh, my writings or my talking gets distributed, it's really up to him. So, um, but I want to do this just for my own sake as well, um, to put some stuff onto YouTube about this amazing letter to the Ephesians. And uh, we very it's very much the pinnacle of Paul's revelation. It's probably the biggest, biggest picture that we can see. And for me, it's really, as I've said before, it is really the foundational book in some, in many ways of the whole Bible. It, it, in some ways, um, it, it gives us the perspective of God from the very beginning and puts the Old Testament into context. And, and we have this coming from Paul the Apostle who was... Um, one of the most highly trained Jewish rabbis and theologians of his time and since that. So uh, it is very, very trustworthy as far as I can see. And that's quite obvious. But the Spirit of God is about enlightening the Scripture. He's about bringing revelation and giving us, um, giving the, the Scripture's life and uh, <clears throat> I, I love some of the old language. I think um, it's just because I'm, I'm a lover of literature and language. And I love the word that it's not in many of the modern translations, but I love the word to quicken. It's used, um, it's used in the old King James Version. And um, it's a word that it means to give life to, to quicken. And uh, for me, that's a very good a good word to describe how revelation happens you know when we read the scriptures for example uh, a verse is quickened to as it sort of leaps with speed um, into our understanding and that's uh, that's the holy spirit is behind that uh, so <clears throat> i really just encourage you to keep listening keep uh Keep receiving the love of the Father and you will find that things will be quickened to you, that things will be accelerated as you keep um, in the love of the Father. And, and the Holy, as you keep in the love of the, of the Father, the Holy Spirit who inhabits that love and who pours it out will, be, will distribute uh, many gifts to you, will distribute revelation to you, will will quicken your senses, will ally, enliven your senses and your mind and your heart um, to, to come into the things that God wants to tell you. So I, I want to just read here from Ephesians chapter 3. And again, we're moving forward. And um, if you need to refresh yourself a little bit, you can go back and listen to episode 8 of my series. So I want to read chapter 3 here and um, I'll start from verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given me by the working of his power. 
To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. I'll just finish there. And I just want to go back to chapter 2 here um, before I get into talking about this. You see, what he's, what he's actually doing, he, he's talking about this living structure, a structure, a spiritual entity, which is the body. But he's using, he, he, Paul actually jumps around a little bit with his metaphors. So he talks about the body and then he begins to use this metaphor of the cornerstone and a building. And he basically um, is talking about a living spiritual entity. And using this metaphor of the building, he says that Jesus Christ, the Son, is the cornerstone. And the whole structure is joined together spiritually, relationally from him. And the first stones really that have been put into place are the apostles and the prophets. They have been made in alignment with the cornerstone. And I said before that this is a historical reality, but I believe in many ways it's a current reality too, that the sonship of Jesus in, in heaven, if you like, the sonship of Jesus is the cornerstone. And yes, we have the, the tradition in that sense of the apostles and prophets, but it's not enough to just go by historical tradition. Uh, there is a thing... There is an idea in the Catholic Church, and I'm not criticizing it at all. I'm just saying this, that there is an idea uh, called apostolic succession. That um, from the early apostles, particularly from Peter, there has been a succession of apostles or leaders right through to today. And that's really where the, the Pope comes in. And I, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with this. I, I'm just... <laughs> I'm not wanting to make those sort of uh, claims, but I'm just observing that that is one way of understanding it. But another way of understanding it is, and this is, I can see this too, that there is an apostolic succession that has come through the reality of the Spirit. And oftentimes through people who are not known. And uh, in some ways, the apostleship of Peter has, has become very visible. There's been a sort of a structure built through it. But in another way, I believe the apostleship of Paul is a different, has a different emphasis. Um, Paul's, the apostolic succession of Paul and, and also Peter and many of the apostles, I believe, comes through the Spirit and therefore, if we get in touch with the Christ who is in heaven and the spirit who hears what, who tells us what he hears from heaven, if we can get in contact with that, we're in that apostolic succession. You see, the church, the living entity of the building uh, in which God will dwell as a holy temple um, flows through Christ the Son but I believe that it also is aligned with those who are in sonship. So I believe that there is a, a ministry today of, of apostles and prophets, if you like. But I've, I want to redefine that in some ways as those who are increasingly aligned with the sonship of Jesus in their hearts as son. And you see, the whole building is actually being built out of sonship, it's being aligned with sonship. So I want to say that, that, that um, in the same way that the body cannot have orphan cells and the bride cannot have an orphan heart, so also the building, the living stones of the building are, the, are what is aligned with sonship. 
Now, I'm not saying, again, I have to be very clear about this, I'm not saying that those who are in the body of Christ, who, uh, and we all have been this, who have been in a state of orphanness, are not the living stones or are not the body of Christ. That's not what I'm saying at all. I believe that every believer is in the body of Christ and every believer historically and on earth is on the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. And actually, um, no one, I don't believe we can really know in many ways who's in or who's out. That's the scandal of the gospel. These are heart realities more than doctrinal realities. But I do believe that... Um, as I'm talking about the experience and the manifestation of things, I do believe that as we come increasingly into sonship, that God will have a temple that he can experientially and increasingly dwell in because it's in the spirit and it's in the spirit of sonship. And so Paul then going on into chapter 3 uh, Paul uh, talks, he's in prison here and he is um, bringing the Gentiles, those who were afar off, which includes me and most likely you, those who were afar off, he is bringing the Gentiles near, he's bringing the Gentiles in and he's lifting them, them up to their full place in the purposes of God. Paul is elevating you and me up to our full place within the purposes of God. And what Paul is actually doing here, Paul in his writings, in his speech, in his person, he's actually, I believe, building the church. He's building the church. You see, what, what builds the church? What builds the holy temple? What builds the body? What matures the body i believe that a, a key element of it is to impart spiritual reality into the cells of the body or the living stones of the body or the members of the bride the body parts of the bride i believe and i believe that as we um, release people from condemnation that we will begin to become a living temple see one of the big massive issues is that we do not see ourselves the way God sees us and this is what Paul is doing with the Gentiles he is unveiling their true place in the purposes of God he is um, unveiling this mystery which was a the word for mystery I've said before but it really is something that has been a closely kept secret that is what mystery means and Paul is saying that in the old days, um, verse 4 here, well he says the mystery was made known to me by revelation. So this mystery, this closely kept secret uh, that the Gentiles are members of the body was made known to Paul by revelation. And he's saying here in the beginning of chapter 3, he's saying that he's a prisoner. <laughs> Things are, he's on lockdown, he's in chains, basically. And he is saying that, he says, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was giving, given to me for you. Basically what this means, the stewardship of God's grace, is that Paul it was given to Paul to be the distributor of the gift. That's what it means, the stewardship of of God's grace he was there and and in the original it sort of talks about that it's to do with the culture of home that there it's almost like Paul is like the father and the mother the parents on Christmas day you know when you're a child on Christmas day and and you come down in the morning and you're so excited I remember I could hardly sleep and I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and and we waited and waited until maybe seven o'clock and then we all ran down the stairs and I remember one particular Christmas that my father was doing some business and he did some business with a man who uh, who owned a toy shop and instead and my father got so many toys for us when when I, I was about eight or nine roughly about the same age as my Jacob but we had sackfuls, sackfuls of toys. It was the most amazing Christmas. 
but this is a fairly accurate picture i believe of what paul is saying when he says that he had the stewardship of god's grace he was he handed out the gifts see on that christmas morning that i'm talking about when i was a child my parents were the administrators the handers out of the gifts and so what is paul is saying here to the gentiles is that he's basically got the stewardship it has been given to him to distribute the gifts god's gifts you see and he's one of the gifts is this unveiling of this closely kept secret this mystery that hey you gentiles have as much privilege as those who who are the insiders you thought you always thought you were second class citizens but hey here's a gift you're not second class citizens you perceive my insight paul has this insight this mystery made known to him by revelation he's got this insight in verse 4 into the mystery of christ which was not made known to the sons of men and other generations other generations being the old testament being the whole history from adam if you like right through it was not made known it was a closely kept secret but it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit you see the building of this new humanity the building of this holy temple comes through the revelation that we are all living stones and that revelation is given to the holy apostles and prophets of which paul is one and the spirit is pouring out this revelation that we are worthy that we are part of the holy temple that that we're back on this we're on this amazing level playing field and he goes on in verse 8 to say that this mystery is that the gentiles are fellow heirs that we are fellow heirs with our older brothers if you like with with the house of israel we are fellow heirs we are members of the same body and we are partakers of the promise in christ jesus through the gospel so this is an incredibly radical it really is but this is how paul is building this new humanity paul as an apostle is a master builder and he's building it through unveiling revelation in the spirit and when he unveils that revelation it quickens the spirit within us so that we can begin to see who we are really so that we can begin to open our hearts for this god who has loved us from an eternity past to come and indwell us by his spirit to really also to have our eyes open that the holy spirit of father son and holy spirit is actually living within us and bringing us into the full absolute full promises of of everything that has been promised right through from from a from a past eternity i mean i encourage you to even go back and again um look at chapter one and chapter two because the partakers of the promise is what paul talks about in chapter one that every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in christ is ours every spiritual blessing the full gamut of the gift is available for us so uh you are fully um, privileged you're fully honored you're a full recipient you're a fully uh, born child of god and um, the gifts that are unveiled to you are gifts that help to establish you in your full identity it's a spiritual gift and even as i just draw this to a bit of an end this particular video and i'll do the other one again the next few verses but as i draw this to an end i want to again just with paul if you like um, welcome you down on christmas morning <laughs> welcome you down on christmas morning and, and all the gifts around the tree and, and just encourage and say the gift is yours you can begin to open it you can begin to explore the every gift that god has given you that the father has given you that you're a full child in the family um 
by spiritual DNA, chosen before the foundation of the world. You know, in God's heart, we are, uh, and Paul even says that, that by faith we are children of Abraham. And I've got to say that I take my full place. <laughs> I'm not some sort of a, an afterthought, uh, but I take my full place in that line as one of God's children. And I, and I just pray for all of us, me as well as you, as you, that we would begin to unwrap those gifts. That we would begin to unwrap the closely kept secrets, that um, secrets would be revealed and secrets would be unveiled. And so just let me finish here and we, I just want to pray about this. Father, I thank you that um, you have had many gifts for us from eternity past but the biggest gift is that we are your sons that we are fully fully part of your precious promises that we are the members of the same body we are partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel that your son has made a way to bring us back into your family that he has brought your kids back to you and now by the Spirit, I, I pray right now for a revelation and a quickening that, that gifts would be unveiled to us. That not only just the gifts of the Spirit, but that gift, the eternal gift, the eternal gift of sonship, the eternal gift of belonging, the eternal gift of our true identity, um, according to Ephesians that we are to be holy and blameless before you and that identity was given to us in a past eternity. And so we just drink now and we receive now in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you for watching. That's my next video and I'll see you the next time. Thank you.